to remotely render your timeline using a second computer so that you can free up your primary DaVinci Resolve workstation to keep working on other tasks inside of Resolve Studio, right click on the project manager of the second computer. We'll call this the, the render computer to go into remote render mode. Then back on your primary Resolve computer on the deliver page, add to the render queue just as usual but click the Wi-Fi looking button to assign the render to the newly available render computer that's waiting on your local network. It'll turn blue, and once you initiate that render, you can go back to cutting, comping, grading, or mixing on the primary workstation. So while this is rendering, here's what you can do now. I can come back over here and do anything I want to do in DaVinci Resolve to other timelines, maybe work on something else. And if you really want to geek out with me today, stick around to the last chapter and I'll walk you through how to use the terminal on a Mac to get even faster remote render speeds using my new M4 Mac Mini. Remote render requirements. Now there's four main requirements and the first is that you have Resolve Studio on each of the machines that are doing both the work and the rendering, okay? I'm using Resolve Studio 19 just because that's the current version right now but just make sure it's the same version on each of them. You can get this discounted if you get the editor keyboard, the speed editor, or any of the cinema cameras. And an important little thing to know is if you get the license key, the one that has the numbers, not the dongle version, you can actually install that onto machines. So with one license that you have, you could have it on your main workstation and your secondary render machine, my M4 Mini that's back there, and everything should work out fine. The second important requirement is you need to be either using the network project libraries in Resolve or the cloud project libraries, which is easily creatable, accessible for just $5 a month. Now, either one of these will work. I typically use the local network one because it's a little bit faster and it's free. Uh, but you could use either one of these. The main thing is you cannot be using the local project libraries to get remote rendering to work. The third remote render requirement is to be able to share your media across to your render machine, across to my Mac Mini. So that could either be done with a NAS, a network attached storage, like I use a Synology NAS connected over 10 gig ethernet, or two and a half gig ethernet, it's actually not bad either. Or today I'll actually show you how you can share out a Samsung T7 SSD right over your network. So on a Mac, I'm using Sonoma on my main workstation. That's what we're looking at right here. And I'm gonna be going to the general tab over to sharing. And under sharing, we've got file sharing. Click the little toggle button to turn file sharing on. This will make the drive visible on the other computer. I'm gonna hit the info button. And you're just gonna add the drive that you wanna be able to share out. So I've already shared this blue T7 drive out, this SSD, it's a direct attached storage. But for you to add a new one, you just hit the plus button right here under shared folders. You navigate to it on your hard drive. Let's say I wanted to share out a different one. I wanted to share out Paintbox instead. I would just select that drive at the root, click open, and you'll see all the different users that have read write um, access to it. So what you'll be able to do once we get to the next chapter is I'll show you how to mount this on the remote station so you have access to the footage and you don't have to relink anything. Along with sharing media access, it's a good idea to make sure you have things like fonts, uh, DRFX files, plugins, uh, LUTs, uh, DCTLs, all the things that you use inside of Resolve that are sort of specialty things. Make sure you have those loaded on the remote system as well. Now, the fourth sort of optional requirement is that I suggest you wire stuff in. You know, you, you plug things in with like an Ethernet cable. You can get a two and a half gig Ethernet adapter to Thunderbolt for like 20 bucks. And I'll, I'll post a link to the ones of those that I use. Otherwise, 10 gig, uh, anytime you buy a computer, buy a 10 gig computer because you might not realize in the near future you might be buying a 10 gig switch and you'll just have it and it'll work. Oh, and the reason I suggest plugging your computers in with an ethernet cable, you can just use cat six, that's fine. But it's because if you use Wi-Fi, you're gonna drop packets. And when you drop packets, you might be dropping frames. So for video work, I always suggest connect your computer with ethernet. Sharing over a network. Now, I am already remotely connected to my Mac Mini over here. And before I do that, I need to show you how can you actually gain access to screen sharing on a Mac. If I open up my system settings, pretend you had done this locally first before remoting in. Under the general setting, just like we did before for sharing, uh, for file sharing, we need to turn on a couple of things in here. The first one is going to be screen sharing, which is how I'm accessing right now. I already have this turned on. So just turn on screen sharing. If you hit the I button over here, the other thing to pay attention to is your IP address. 
because your IP address can be really useful if you want to directly connect to it, as well as the other setting that's down here. If you want to follow along to the final chapter I have in this video about connecting over SSH to work on this through the command line, which actually gives you faster render speeds, go down to the bottom where it says remote login and check the box to turn remote login on as well. And under here, we want to turn that on and you can make note of the IP address because we're going to need that to log into here. And also the other thing that I found really kind of important for um, anytime I'm working with the, the NAS is to allow full disk access for remote users. Um, otherwise I have permissions errors running out of Resolve. So make sure both of those are turned on. And the way I get to this screen, so this is done locally first, the way I actually can get to this Mac mini computer on my Resolve workstation, there's an app that's built into your applications folder. This is on Sonoma. It's obviously on the newer versions as well. Under Utilities, Screen Sharing, double click it, and you can find all the available computers on your network. And if you right click on these on newer computers, you can go into the Edit command here and say, I want a display type. I want one virtual display. I want high performance mode, whatever that is. Um, the older computers are not gonna have high performance mode but I found this to be really, really handy. And then you don't have to use a separate paid app like Jump Desktop, which I strongly recommend. Jump Desktop is amazing. Or there's Parsec, which is good for video editing or other you know, IT apps like there's TeamViewer, LogMe and that sort of thing. But basically first you set up screen sharing on the computer. And then once we log in, let me log into this machine. There's a preference in DaVinci Resolve that you wanna turn on on each of the remote rendering machines. So I'm gonna launch DaVinci Resolve. I don't even have to go into a project on this remote machine. I just need to go to Preferences and then the General tab of Preferences. And there's this checkbox here that says Automatically Scan Other Project Libraries for Remote Rendering Jobs. Check that. And I actually, I prefer to do this on pretty much every system that's in a facility so that any computer can be used as a remote rendering machine. So make sure that is checked, hit save. I am actually going to open up the project on the remote machine so we can make sure our media is all attached and connected, which I know it's not right now. So if I double click the SSD project right here, which means I'm not using my NAS, there's no trickery going on. And I go to the edit tab, media pool, cuts, and I open up a timeline. I've got offline stuff all over the place and that's because it hasn't found these 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 files right if i right click on them and i say reveal and finder it's going to tell me this lives on this blue t7 drive so i need to mount the volume we shared out from the main resolve workstation so an easy way to mount that drive that i shared out from the other computer is i can just open up a new finder window with command n and then if i go down to locations i can find network and then under network, I can find the name of that computer that shared it out. So it's gonna be CVT Studio was the name of that computer. And I say, can say connect as, yes, I do wanna connect. And the name of the user this is the username that, that has you know admin permissions on the other computer. So this is admin credentials for the computer that has the hard drive plugged into it, okay? So for me, it's that. And then we can say, yeah, we wanna remember that later on so it'll make it visible again easier later on. I double click the blue T7 drive and you can see that mounts just like any other network volume here in uh, on, on the remote machine. So now if I go back to DaVinci Resolve, it found all my files. I just had to say allow. And now we have access to all that footage which is actually playing through the ethernet cables to the SSD on the other computer. So now that the footage is mounted, we've got footage that's linked up or available on the remote machine. I'm gonna show you the GUI method first because it's really simple if you have screen sharing turned on. Now in Resolve Studio 19, you can right click and say remote rendering. This is the way that I prefer to do this. You don't even need to open the project, although it is available if you go down under workspace to go straight into remote rendering. I just go straight from the project manager, click remote rendering, and now this machine is available to take renders. And I'm, in the finder itself, I might go into my post bin and make a new bin, command shift N, and give it something like today's date so I can track uh, what I sent to a client when. Now on the, the main workstation, so this is the blue one is my remote one. This is my main workstation. You just, you set this up like normal. You go to the deliver page, you say, you choose your presets you wanna use. I might choose H.264 master. 
you click browse, you say, where do I want it to go? Oh, I want it to go in that dated post bin folder. I say, add to render queue. And here's where the magic happens. If you click on this little Wi-Fi looking button here, it's actually your remote render button. If you click on that, now you have access to any computer that's on your network that's available from that database at some point to do remote rendering. I'm gonna choose the CVT Mini, which is the Mac Mini M4. And then once I hit render, it's gonna not render on this machine. It's gonna send it over, if I go to screen sharing over here, you should see it starting to render out from this computer over here. So it says remote rendering ready, and see, you can see it's got a progress bar, and it's starting to hopefully take shape over here, and sure enough, so this is the Mac Mini M4 that it's starting to process that video. You can see it's got, it's a three minute video, it takes like, you know, a minute and a half or something like that on the M4 to render out. And it's rendering to that shared storage back through the ethernet cables to the SSD that's connected to my main workstation. So while this is rendering, here's what you can do now. I can come back over here and do anything I want to do in DaVinci Resolve to other timelines, maybe work on something else while this deliver page, this render queue is taking care of that other job. Once this is done, I'll show you how you can find it. And we'll take a, a quick preview of what the screen sharing, the Mac mini M4 created over there. So if I right click on the word here, there's a reveal and finder. It's a quick way to open up the file and take a look at what it made. And we can see we've made an export from another machine, but it's actually on this blue T7 that's on my resolve, my main workstation. Now, obviously a NAS would be a better way to do this, but the one downside to using this method is I found it's a little bit slower than actually using the command line. And so I'll show you how to do that next. But before we do that, to get out of remote rendering on the remote machine, let's say you want to do editing on that machine or do something else. You just go under, let me click on here. You go to the workspace menu down to remote rendering. As soon as you disable that, it takes remote rendering off so that Resolve can work as normal or you could just, you know, you could close it. So it's a right click remote rendering or it's always under the workspace remote rendering to turn on or off. Before we get to the terminal, I actually want to show you one other really handy tip that's good to know. So I'm going to go ahead on this, this Mac mini, I'm going to close resolve command Q, get out of that. I'm actually going to close screen sharing because I don't even need that open anymore for what I'm going to be doing in the next big chapter here. So I'll, I'll just close my, quit my screen sharing completely. Have you ever noticed sometimes if you go straight to the deliver page from the edit page, sometimes this can get slow over time depending on how many exports you've done. Well, that's actually because they're all saved and stored in that database. So this three dot menu up here in the upper right, if you click this, you can say show all projects. And this will show every render you've done from every project in that project library or, or database. I, I use those terms interchangeably. Now this is a brand new project library, so there's not a lot in here, but you may have hundreds in here. And it's a really good idea to come in here and clear this out every once in a while. So if you go up here once you say you showed all, say clear all, and that's gonna really, it'll take a second, but that's gonna really speed up anytime you need to hop from the edit page to do the deliver page. Now let's take a look at how we can use the terminal to send this to the Mac mini instead. Well, I'm gonna open up terminal, command space opens terminal, or you'll find this as well in the finder. If we take a look here, utilities, terminal, and we've got our command line here. So remember earlier on in the system settings, we turned on under general sharing, uh, we turned on remote login on the remote machine. This allows us to SSH in. If you haven't done that already, make sure you turn that on because that's how we're gonna log in. So with the terminal open, the first thing I'm gonna do is log into the other machine just using the terminal, not using screen sharing or anything like that. So I'm gonna type in a command called SSH and then what I need to do is I need to type the username first of who I want to be logging into. And the username is going to be CVT-mini. And then you say at the IP address of that computer that's on your network. So again, we could find this from the info button on the, the screen sharing, the sharing section of your, or in the network settings of the computer. So I know this is going to be this address right here. And if I hit return, it's gonna prompt me for a password. Now, the first time you do this, it might ask for um, a, a key uh, to authenticate and just say yes, if that's the case. After you've done it the first time, it remembers, that machine remembers it can SSH in, uh, but that'll happen the first time, no problem. So just enter your user password on that computer to log into that computer. 
I think this has to be an admin. Um, most of my machines run things as admin. And now I'm logged into that computer over there, the CVT Mini, the Mac Mini M4. Now the working directory that it logs into, you can see over here, this is actually the user home folder. So if I type something like PWD to print the working directory, and I say LS to list what's in there, you can see this is a typical uh, home user folder, right? It's got desktop, documents, downloads. To actually get to DaVinci Resolve, the application, we need to go up a level from here. So one way to do that is using the command CD for change directory. So type CD once you're logged in with SSH, and then you'll do a space and then a forward slash, and that will take us to the root of that computer. And from this point on, we can just put one string of text in here which I'll, I'll paste on the, in the video right now so you can easily get to that, which will get you to the directory you need to initiate the remote render command. So the directory we need to access is, is we need to CD into this location right here. Now this is for a Mac. There is a Windows equivalent. It's in the manual if you want to find out how to do this on Windows. But it's basically applications and it's inside the application itself. So inside that dot app, now, if you're you're new to command line stuff, there's spaces in the word of entry resolve, so you need to make sure you have that the forward slash in there whenever there's spaces. If I hit return, that should take us to that location. If I hit ls to list what's in there, we can see the resolve command is is available. So to initiate remote rendering, you hit this just a couple commands here. You hit period, which calls up that current directory. We're gonna do a forward slash, and then we'll type in resolve space dash. RR for remote rendering. So it's going to be a, a dot, a forward slash, space, and then RR. And this is these are the commands for a Mac. If as soon as I hit return, it'll usually just take a second or two. But once we get a notice, there we go, accept a new client. So once the terminal says accept a client, we can send a render over to it. So over here on my main machine, my main artist workstation, I'm gonna take my file name and make a copy of that. We'll go down here, call this a custom name, just so I can give this a, maybe the, we'll call this one the CLI version. We'll say add to render queue. You could do whatever settings you want to over here. And just like before, I'll click that Wi-Fi button, hit CVT mini, render all, and it's still sending to the mini computer, the other remote rendering computer, but this time I don't even open screen sharing or open up DaVinci Resolve. It's all running through SSH and this uh, dash RR command that we've initiated on here. There we go, it has kicked off. Um, a lot of times um, it, it, it getting started is, is the slowest part. Once it gets going, it, it'll just start cooking. And again, if you have a NAS, like a Synology NAS or any high-end video specific NAS, uh, then you don't have to do this file sharing over the network with a single SSD. I just want to show this because you could probably set this up today with stuff that you have available. If you have DaVinci Resolve Studio and you have two, two computers, and this machine, this, this mini, it's already finished this. It looks like it took 34 seconds, which was definitely shorter than it was when I did it with the GUI version using screen sharing. Um, this is still open and available for new connections. So if you just start this up in the middle of the day and you want to render stuff and you can just keep this open and keep rendering to that machine as you keep working in DaVinci Resolve while that's rendering out, there's no problem because you're not locked down to having this one system doing all the rendering. Now, when you're totally done for the day and you don't want to render that machine anymore and you want to get access to Resolve maybe on the other machine or just stop the process, in the terminal window, you're going to hit Control C. And what that'll do, that'll kill Resolve, that'll close the the uh, the remote rendering function that's going on. And then after that, you probably want to exit, log out the SSH shell that you're logged into. So I'm going to hit exit, and that will get me, that will remove my connection to there. So now I'm using the terminal on this computer again, but I don't need to anymore. I can hit Command D to close that, and I'm totally out of everything. Command Q. This is super pro Hollywood level stuff that's built right into Resolve Studio. And if you have Resolve Studio, you actually also have a license to Fusion Studio that has a dedicated render manager for rendering VFX image sequences that can use all your available horsepower that's on your local network. That Fusion Renderer deserves a dedicated tutorial. Hey, I'm Chadwick, and if you want to dive deeper, reach out to me through creativevideotips.com and maybe even schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. 
I appreciate you so much like always, and because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.